Hi guys! Hi. It's Jack in the Rain back again with another video and today, what are we doing in the rain? Well, today we are going to talk about how to write voiceover friendly scripts. You may have noticed that I didn't actually script that bit uh, with, with the rain, that's why you're like, oh! <laughs> Is it my turn? Oh my god! Do I speak uh, yeah, now? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> To Raquel. Um, so, <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, um, obviously uh, working in the industry that we do, we come across scripts quite a lot, and we've also had the benefit of work, of seeing um, production in terms of a as a voiceover artist mm -hmm. in a session mm -hmm. and as a producer in a, mm -hmm. in a session. Uh, we've also written as well yes. ourselves. We've also done script writing, yes. both of us. So, so actually, this is probably something that we can very very much hand on heart talk about from our own experience. Yes, so hopefully we can use that experience to impart wisdom to you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the first so how thing... how would we write a voiceover friendly script? Yes, very good question. The first thing to do when writing a voiceover friendly script is obviously once you've written your script, because I imagine you'll have an idea of what you're writing about already. Once you've written your script, if you want to check that it's voiceover friendly, just read it out loud. Sounds basic. But boy, people miss out on this. But this is this is so important because so the number important. of scripts, the number of um, whatever um, content you see out there, the number of times a person hasn't actually written it, and even in emails, it's also a good idea just to read it out loud so you can see how it's coming across. Hmm. Because often the written word is very very different, and sometimes writers, um, especially in terms of advertising copy, like to do things like alliteration, um, which on paper and print um, for magazines and etc. It works really well. Hmm. However, when uh, voicing, for example, these little tricks sometimes don't work as well. Yeah, they don't translate as well into no. a different medium. No. And uh, similarly, we find quite a lot, especially with more um, science and technology based companies, that a lot of their scripts will have um, a lot of big words which you wouldn't use every day. And uh, whilst that in itself is not a problem. What can be a problem is um, these companies assume because they use it in their everyday uh, business talking with other uh, business to business or employees and so on, that the word seems fairly normal to them. But actually for a voiceover, for somebody who hasn't worked in that industry, they may not know how to say that word. Mm. And so pr a prom line, a pronunciation line at the top of the script is very, 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 very useful. And actually, I find that a lot of the time companies don't do that, but actually yeah. they should, because when in radio commercial copywriting, we always put a prom line in. Absolutely. Um, so you can get through that session nice and quickly, the voice yeah. knows exactly what they're saying. And it's jargon, so, you know, jargon sometimes doesn't translate into the, the consumer world um, as opposed to a trade body world, so mm. it's, it's really something that uh, script writers really bear in mind, and it's also the, the content as well as context. Mm. That's and, really essential to understand. And like you were saying with the alliteration as well, um, it, reading it out loud makes you realise that actually some words, and I'm not just with alliteration, mm. but some words are actually really difficult when you put actually, them together. Do you, know what, do you know what words are really difficult? Lake District. Lake District, yes, without saying You have the K and then the D, and then it's quite, it's quite, quite a choppy, choppy part of the word. Mm. That's actually quite hard to say. You can't change that, because it is actually the Lake District. Yes, and you have to obviously, and you obviously want to make it clear what you're saying, mm. whereas in general conversation you might say Lake District and just drop the K exactly. completely. Exactly. Um, Actually, when you're voicing it, it has to be nice and clear. You have to be, yes, very obvious what you're saying. Exactly. And oh, you almost overpronounce things, mm. don't you? Um, which, again, it's like words like di digitization. Digitization. Very difficult Ooh. to say. I don't think it's a real word, so but I've seen it in nemesis. scripts. It's a nemesis of many a voice. Yes. Um, there's, lo there's lots of words like that would actually, on paper, look absolutely fine. But as soon as you read them out loud, they're quite difficult to say. There are, there are combinations and phrases oh. of words that you put together, which, again, look absolutely fine on paper. Paper, but then you say them out loud, even in a meeting, and then you realise, oh, that doesn't work. Yeah, like, uh, oh, that yeah. sounds horrific. Yeah. That sounds really bad. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so reading it out loud really helps iron out a lot of those problems before you get into the session. Like, do that well in advance of your um, session with the voiceover artist. Just make sure the script is finalised and proofread. Exactly. And our second point is time. Timing. Timing. What's the secret of comedy? Oh, oh wait, what? Time, timing. Okay. That sounds like that's how to ruin a very old joke. 
Anyway, timing is very, very important for, um, particularly for advertising, things like that that have very strict time signatures. Very, or if very you're strict. syncing to video as well as the other very one. Very strict as well. Um, and if you're doing a good uh, video syncing script, you will have put time signatures in yes, your yes. script so you know exactly how long you have to say, uh, you as the voiceover artist, know how long you have to say this particular phrase, how much time you've got to fit that in, and what part of the video that comes in. So for the editor, they're going to know where that bit of. Uh, and that's actually a central point in. that when you are doing a job, always, always ask if this is uh, to be synced or wild because you need to have those time signatures. You really do. Mm. Because you can't just make them up on the spot in the session. You actually have to know the timings, as does the engineer. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, how else would you know? Yeah, and if the if the client doesn't give you a, a time signature in the script and they're saying that it needs to be synced, then oh, sorry. Um, they need to do it. Uh, either they give you a script with time signatures, or I think at the very least they give you a copy of the video so that you can watch that and you can see where the phrases come in and you can kind of get an idea in your head as to where the time signatures go. You can even have the video playing whilst speaking over it, for instance. But yes. that that is the only other way around. And it. if the script says fifteen seconds, then you know, the the copywriter really should be writing to it to fit the fifteen seconds or the thirty or the ten or however long it is because um yeah, it's particularly with commercials, particularly with Very commercials. Very much with commercials, it, it really has got to fit. So um, always, again, go back to point number one, read it out loud and time it, because if you're coming in at 16 seconds the whole time, a word's got to be shaved. And we've been in many a session where mm. we're, we're script writing on the go and we're trying to take out words um, with or without the client because it, it simply won't fit. Yeah, Everyone's trying to put the all the words in. Because uh, obviously there's a conflict of interest because the clients want to put as much detail as they can into it about their business and things that they think are important. The If they have a separate writer, that writer will then be trying to pick it apart and get to what the listener, what the ideal consumer wants to hear, not what the client wants to say. Um, so there is that negotiation beforehand which should, should have happened. A lot of the time we find though, um, we find this doesn't generally happen. No, it doesn't. Um, but there are, there are styles, you know, in TV often because you have pictures then there is no need really to shoehorn every single word in. Less is definitely more when it comes to TV adverts. However, radio you are painting a picture with the words that the voiceover is actually saying. So, but then that is, you have to trade off between the actual words and the time that you're going to fit into. Mm. So if you are writing a voiceover friendly script for that advert, uh, particularly, make sure that you time them. And actually a good, uh, good tip I would say for adverts in particular is to uh, make sure uh, you have about 10% 10 uh, 10 of your time as a breathing room. So if an advert is meant to be 30 seconds long, write it so that when you read it out loud, I'm presuming this is your, your voiceover is talking throughout the advert, make sure what they're saying fits into 27 seconds. That way you have three seconds either way for music, for sound effects, for things like that. It just gives the producer some breathing room, it gives the voiceover breathing room so you don't end up with a very naff sounding voiceover that's been sped up because everyone yes. can see that just you can hear it straight away if it's been sped up it sounds a bit amateur yes and you can also hear when a voice is, is trying to go very fast but read it very slow it's a real skill that but it's 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 actually quite hard and you can start to hear when it comes through mm. um, so those are really the key points yeah i think i think that's the, the main things for uh for writing VO friendly scripts. One other thing I guess we could say is in sessions, so when you're within the session with the voiceover artist, it may be that that voiceover um, uh, take, takes exception to or highlights a turn of phrase that you have in uh, your script and perhaps they may suggest mm -hmm. another way of saying it which may be easier for them to say but also might translate better, like might make more sense and I think uh, as the client, I think you should be open to being flexible with that sort of thing and being, you know, allowing um, that voiceover artist to, to do that within limits, of course. They're not going to be changing the meaning or changing what they're talking about. They're not going to start talking about eggs if they're meant to be talking about tomatoes, for instance. Uh, I absolutely agree. I think that's a really valid point. And it, 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 don't be afraid to let the voiceover, and as a voiceover, don't be afraid to ad lib and just say, look, I've got some couple of ideas. I'll, I'll change the phrase, you know, mm. just, just to throw in an extra in the bag because every single client wants to have options and that's what it's about. They just want to have as many options as they can. The more options they have, 
the better. Yeah, they it, can choose. Yeah, and it also makes you, as the voice, I think you look more attentive. Um, the fact that you are you, that you care more, the fact that you are suggest making these suggestions to the client, I think that's that's quite valued in itself. And then as the client, I think that um, it's also yeah. Again, you see that that voiceover uh, is you know using their own initiative, and that may be something that actually for future projects you might call on them again because they clearly know what they're doing and they care about what you're doing. There's an understanding there. It helps build rapport. Exactly. So yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. another another good point, I think. Uh, but is there anything else? Do you reckon? I think those are the main bases I think covered. Covered everything. Yes. Excellent. Well, anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, let us know either way. If you want any more details, you know where to find us. Until the next video, I've been Jack. I've been Arane. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.